हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ओएनएफ स्पॉटलाइट ऑन 5G कनेक्टेड एट क्लाउड फॉर इंडस्ट्री 4.0 ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन आई एम गुरु परुलकर आई सर्व एज द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ ओपन नेटवर्किंग फाउंडेशन एंड आल्सो आई सर्व एज द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ स्टैनफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटीज प्लेटफॉर्म लैब I am delighted to introduce Kurt Shaba as our keynote speaker. He is going to talk about connectivity for Industry 4.0. Kurt is the CTO of Federated Wireless, where he plays a key role in developing new technologies and business strategies to create the next generation architecture for broadband wireless. Kurt brings over 25 years of wireless industry experience to Federated Wireless. previously he served in various engineering roles at multiple companies including nrtc next wave wireless lcc international and southwestern bell kurt has been active in spectrum development management and policy matters throughout his career kurt thanks so much for doing this as a keynote um, speaker for our event uh, and please take it away Great. Thanks so much, Guru, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. So I'm going to start by you know, talking a little bit about connectivity for Industry 4.0, and certainly as we think about sort of this fourth generation of the industrial revolution, what comes to mind is greater degrees of automation, integration of AI, and certainly the Internet of Things. And um, As um, a CTO of Federated Wireless, I work very closely with companies around helping to enable Industry 4.0. Federated is a company that's headquartered in Arlington, Virginia, just outside Washington D.C. We were founded in 2015, and our company background is in spectrum sharing. Certainly, disruption is a big part of um, what. Open Networking Foundation is all about, and disaggregation. Those are two words that I'm sure are used quite frequently in in ONF discussions. And Federated has been really pioneering disaggregation and disruption of conventional models in the wireless industry since 2015, but in a very unique sort of part of the wireless communication world, and specifically in the area of spectrum. What we've been doing is pioneering this. New shared spectrum model, where um, we use the power of cl uh, cloud computing to effectively compute out interference and enable a form of sharing, where incumbent users can remain in the band, and new commercial uses can take advantage of spectrum that is otherwise uh, or had previously been underutilized. So, the key components of this technology that we've developed is a spectrum access system, a cloud-based cloud. A cloud-based platform that is used to provide spectrum management, and a sensor network which is used to identify when a particular form of incumbent, in this case the U.S. Navy, is accessing the band, and um, we use those sensors to identify or detect when their uses are underway and inform the cloud platform that an action may need to be taken in order to provide incumbent protection. There are other users in the band as well, other commercial users that also are um, incumbent users and receive protection. But the principal use is through the U.S. Navy, and traditionally, the U.S. Navy has been only a uh, a user of a very small portion of um, the spectrum band that's allocated for these radar systems that we identify and protect, and they only use them uh, at select locations around the U.S., like for example, in certain U.S. coasts, large areas of the U.S. that um, are land-based um, are completely unaffected by these radar operations. So it was really an ideal spectrum band that we um, have identified here and been able to work on to develop a cloud platform to enable spectrum sharing. This band that I'm referring to, the Citizens Broadband Radio Service or CBRS band. Is 150 megahertz of spectrum that sits right in midband, um, what is uh, between the three and four gigahertz region. And what's really ideal about midband spectrum is that when you think about industry 4.0 applications, which require a good balance of coverage and capacity, spectrum that sits right in the um, three gigahertz range is really ideal for um, those sorts of applications. 
So um, we developed this technology um, in coordination with um, the Department of Defense, um, other commercial users, as I indicated, with the Federal Communications Commission, and really helped pioneer the uh, introduction of this commercially. We've been now operating in the Citizens Broadband Radio Service for a little over a year and have seen tremendous success in terms of making spectrum available for new business models, new users of spectrum. If you think traditionally, there were really only you know, one real option available for um, any sort of industrial user, any enterprise user for spectrum. And that was, of course, unlicensed spectrum and using Wi-Fi technology. But what we've been able to do through our cloud compute platform and with uh, CBRS is now make spectrum that's 4G today, 5G ready in the future, uh, 5G starting next year, uh, available for industries, for this industrial revolution, for enterprises um, on a very deterministic basis. Like I said, we use cloud computing to identify um, or uh, predict the radio frequency propagation for every network node that is operated in the band and provide interference protection, not only for incumbents, but for other commercial users so that we can provide a very organized and deterministic way of accessing the band. Users, whoever is deploying a, a wireless solution um, or wireless network, their network nodes connect through um, a RESTful API to the SAS platform to register and authenticate and receive spectrum assignments. And we're able to apply machine learning and other AI algorithms to really optimize the process of spectrum assignments. I talked about the predictions that we're doing of RF propagation and interference, but we're also able to apply these um, AI algorithms to be able to understand what are intelligent spectrum assignments that we can make in the future and make the system more adaptable as new commercial users come online. So again, this band, the CBRS band that we helped um, pioneer and commercialize is really ideal for private wireless networks for three key reasons, what we call the three C's, um, coverage, control, and cost. And these are really areas where today, Wi-Fi technology or you know, any um, uh, network solution that is um, leveraging unlicensed technology that is owned and operated by the enterprise or networks that are MNO uh, deployed on behalf of the enterprise or industrial user fall short. In terms of coverage, the CBRS band uh, is able to support higher power levels than um, is available in uh, Wi-Fi for those network nodes, leading to much greater coverage stability, uh, much better performance for um, uh, each network node in terms of the coverage that it's able to achieve, and also a much greater level of mobility is supported because this is 4G and true 5G technology. So you can support applications like voice, which have always been very difficult to do over uh, Wi-Fi networks. In addition, control. So these are truly private networks. This is spectrum that's made available on a, on a, a dedicated basis for the enterprise for the industrial user, so they have complete control over the network infrastructure, the quality of service, the means by which they are authenticating end users, and most importantly, all of the traffic remains on site. All of this can be fully integrated in a cloud native way with an edge compute platform. And also cost. So again, the fact that these network nodes can support more range um, means less infrastructure. Fewer APs need to be deployed fewer network nodes, and that leads to much better performance and lower cost for the enterprise to deploy. So when we think about the world of private wireless networks, of course, businesses want to accelerate their digital transformation. They want to take advantage of IoT applications um, to improve the efficiency of their business. Um, but they also want to just improve coverage in a lot of locations where to date, maybe the um, existing coverage options, the MNO networks, fall short. So, you know, examples of those would be like smart stadiums or campuses or smart city or smart hotel or even smart office environments where, in addition to the more obvious applications like IoT to make the building operations more efficient, 
um, to provide a greater level of security, there's you know, an inherent advantage that these private networks are able to offer in terms of just improved coverage indoors to say support voice applications for the operations personnel inside of a large stadium or point of sale devices or on a smart campus to be able to provide integrated services and coverage, not only within buildings, but you know, on, on the entire indoor outdoor campus environment. So really private wireless, I think um, is going to unlock a tremendous number of applications, IOT being central to that, you know, the internet of things and the automation that'll come along with it, the efficiencies that it will drive, but also just the, uh, really the improvement of coverage and capability in both indoor and outdoor environments, because enterprises are now able to make investments that are right-sized for their specific needs. So one example that we really like to talk about in terms of um, the future of, uh, um, you know, the industrial industry 4.0, and the industrial revolution that's coming with IoT is the smart warehouse. This is really a, a great example of how a variety of different IoT applications, different voice communication or employee communication solutions come together. So when you think about IoT, you're thinking about things like um, connecting uh, conveyor belts, manned forklifts, you know, um, uh, automatically guided vehicles, autonomous forklifts, to, to not only make those operations more efficient in terms of maybe picking items out of the warehouse or placing them in the warehouse, but also just in terms of making sure the equipment is maintained more efficiently, identifying potential failures before they occur, making sure that we've got a, a much more efficient way of um, maintaining equipment and maintaining uptime of that equipment. Um, similarly, we can integrate things like um, uh, security solutions to provide security for uh, the uh, personnel that are working in the warehouse, as well as safety solutions like um, integrated uh, security and fire alarm capabilities. So not only can we make the environment safer for the employees, but just much more efficient in terms of things like asset tracking and you know, handling the logistics from when equipment or when um, uh, supplies arrive at the warehouse to when they when they depart. And in communication solutions for all of the warehouse personnel from rugged eye scanners to barcode readers to even AR glasses that allow employees, um, maybe warehouse personnel to move more efficiently through the warehouse and in a more, much more safe environment, especially in an environment which will be much more collaborative with AGVs and autonomous forklifts and operators. And of course, bringing this all together, things like building operations to make the warehouse itself more energy efficient um, and you know, more, uh, more cost effective for the enterprise. So these solutions come together in a very simple way um, when we talk about a private wireless solution for 5G and what we are able to enable with um, shared spectrum. Um, Either IoT gateways or embedded capabilities will exist in a 5G context. Um, so think conveyor belts and forklifts maybe have a, an IoT gateway that is equipped with a, a, um, a USB device, which is a 5G um, dongle or, uh, or you know, transceiver. And embedded capabilities that might be in cameras, scanners, other ruggedized devices, all of them connecting to network nodes, in these cases, um, small cells, um, uh, private wireless genome bees in 5G context that would provide all of the wireless connectivity. And those um, uh, small cells connect to a completely virtual or cloud native uh, core control solution. So all of the capabilities necessary to um, control the network, operate and maintain the network, optimize the network would reside on-prem and in addition to that, we, there would be capabilities to do, you know, real-time AI and analytics to support those very um, bandwidth-intensive, low-latency applications. And of course, maintain all the data sovereignty that the enterprise would demand for any data that is particularly has particular needs for security or um, or, or data sovereignty. And you know, this completely contained solution, of course, can you know, uh, connect out to all sorts of um, hosted 
um, or managed cloud solutions like an IoT capability, uh, other cloud compute um, applications or resources, and any third party applications. So this self-contained solution, again, under the complete control of the enterprise, they can deploy, own, operate all of this, all of this being 5G. And really what unlocks this capability is something that has never been available to an enterprise before. And that's a high quality managed spectrum solution. A spectrum solution that looks like wireless spectrum, uh, look like, looks like licensed spectrum for the enterprise, much like what the MNOs have access to, has the same attributes in terms of the quality, um, the predictability, but is free to the enterprise because it's managed through this cloud uh, software platform that we've developed. So a couple applications, practical applications that we've actually worked on, again, in the smart warehouse environment. This was with a large um, uh, electric car manufacturer in California. Um, they had these on uh, automatically guided vehicles, barcode scanners that they were using over a Wi-Fi network. And the challenge was they were hitting dead spots. They would routinely run into locations where the barcode scanners were out of range. The AGVs would stop and stall because they lost connectivity with the network or the amount of bandwidth that was delivered to that AGV, AGV was unpredictable. So they needed a low cost solution, something that they could completely manage, something that was under their complete control and a private wireless solution was really ideal. So we helped them deploy um, this solution, retrofit the AGVs, with those uh, gateway devices and external uh, modems that you saw on the previous slide and able to bring the solution together to provide very complete and reliable coverage inside the warehouse environment. Um, similarly, we're working with the Department of Defense to develop the next generation of smart warehouse capabilities for um, our uh, nation's armed forces. And in this case, it's with a Marine Corps logistics base in Albany, Georgia. And this is a project that's actually being funded by the DOD to help build a template for next generation uh, warehouse, smart warehouse functionality for the military. So all sorts of efficiency improvements, um, everything from when um, uh, supplies arrive at the you know, shipping dock to when they are um, put into um, uh, the hands of our warfighters to you know, deploy out into the field um, from you know, supply management to storage and issuance and inventory control, inventory control. We're providing a very complete solution that um, is all 5G based. All of this is based on CBRS as the underlying spectrum and 5G ORAM to provide um, a great deal of flexibility and of course, very low cost. You know, that's the key advantage that ORAM will provide in the, in, in the future is the ability to you know, virtualize all of the RAM functionality and get to a very low, uh, very scalable, very low cost point and very scalable solution for, um, you know, for the military, which we believe this will be a, uh, an outstanding proof point or example template that will prove out in the commercial environment as well. So a couple of key takeaways, of course, IoT is sort of leading the charge around connectivity and in industry 4.0. Um, but um, there are really a whole range of opportunities when you think about private wireless networks for enterprises, for industrials, for manufacturing, for our transportation or healthcare verticals. Everything from you know, improving uh, the uh, coverage and capability inside their, their buildings to integrated indoor outdoor applications that are, are needed over a campus environment to, of course, um, helping them develop a much more flexible and resilient business, um, which is increasingly important in these uh, in the time of the, the pandemic uh, and beyond. Um, uh, connectivity solutions that are driven by 5G that are deployed over private networks that put all of the control and capability in the hands of the enterprise are really the way of the future. And we're really excited to be part of this transformation that's occurring now through making shared spectrum um, or spectrum, this incredibly valuable resource available in a very disaggregated way for um, enterprises to uh, deploy and operate with. 
So um, Guru, with that, I'll, I'll hand it back to you and I'm happy to do some Q&A. Oh, uh, terrific. So Kurt, uh, thank you for a pretty clear presentation. Really appreciate it. And uh, I must say, given some other work that we have been doing at ONF, I can completely relate to what you're trying to say and what the opportunity is and uh, you know what kind of transformation we can bring about. Um, so let me uh, walk you through some of the questions that, you know, uh, are questions that I have, but also the question we typically hear uh, when we are talking about private 5G over CBRS uh, and so on. So I guess the first question that always gets answered is, what, what about Wi-Fi 6? Because as you know, Wi-Fi is not sitting stand still, right? They are also moving and Wi-Fi 6 is claiming that they have some of the attributes of cellular networks as well. So tell me, what is your take on Wi-Fi 6 versus private 5G over CBRS? Yeah, and uh, thanks Guru. And it's, it's a question that we get quite often as well. And I think it's important to think about these two um, technologies as coexisting as opposed to it being uh, an either uh, or, or as, as much as an ant. Certainly Wi-Fi isn't going away. And like you said, Wi-Fi continues to develop technically. You know, the Wi-Fi uh, community continues to add capabilities to enhance the, the user experience. But fundamentally, unlicensed spectrum is unmanaged spectrum. And it's even with the technology that you're able to put into Wi-Fi 6, like, you know, enhanced, um, interference uh, mitigation techniques, you know, through things like graph coloring. Um, these techniques still um, are uh, hampered or hindered by the fact that the spectrum itself is unmanaged and users have to contend for access at all times. The key advantage of what we've done in CBRS is that we've increased the amount of predictability. So when you think about different applications like something that is very latency sensitive, something that needs a higher degree of security, perhaps, which is much more um, conducive to 5G, which has data encryption throughout. Um, there are some inherent advantages that 5G and 5G over managed spectrum in a private wireless context can provide versus Wi-Fi 6. So we don't think as this is going to be a decision for an IT manager or a CIO to say, you know, I need to do CBRS 5G, or Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6. I think it's much more they're going to be doing both those things and they're going to be now having options to think about over which network do they want to run which application. And you know in many cases like when you think about a, a smart stadium or smart warehouse uh, or smart venue um, or smart airport application, you know a great example might be the Wi-Fi network is available as a public amenity for people to do, you know, basic broadband connectivity. And the 5G CBRS network is available for all the IoT applications, the internal workforce communication needs. So it's a completely private secure network um, that is on dedicated spectrum. But of course, Wi-Fi is available because, you know, uh, whoever is um, frequenting, you know, the frequenting the airport to, you know, uh, as part of you know, their, um, their needs, you know, they need a, a, you know, a very simple way of, you know, getting on the network and Wi-Fi 6 is going to continue to offer that. Okay. So, yes, so you, in your own presentation, you talked about the warehouse both, uh, and then in the context of DOD, uh, wanting to deploy your technology, and that's great. Are there other use cases that you would consider uh, the most compelling use cases that right, the enterprises are wanting to deploy with 5G over CBRS. What yeah, and the I think top it, four or five use cases that you would sure. consider. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Guru. So, th so there are sort of three key areas, three three sort of needs that I think um, we're seeing the most um, uh, activity around right now. One is around um, critical communications. So anything that requires voice communications, certainly doing it over a 4G network, which is what's available CG, CBRS today and 5G. Um, that is a key driver for investment today because as I said, Wi-Fi networks have traditionally and continue to be challenged to do um, you know, really effective sort of 
campus-wide indoor-outdoor voice over large areas where um, certainly CBRS um, and 4G is, 5G is much, much more conducive to support those needs. The other is around security applications because they want to, you know, have a fully encrypted connection. They, you know, prefer devices to be SIM authenticated versus, you know, other traditional authentication techniques. And here again, you know, 4G and 5G, you know, 4G, that's the investment today, 5G in the future, those um, applications like security cameras, like image recognition, um, facial recognition capabilities, um, really rely on very high security, secure links, um, uh, consistent bandwidth. And that again is something that we're really seeing sort of a, a key area of investment uh, today. And we will continue to see that into the, into the future. Um, the third area is around, you know, automation. And, you know, I talked about this smart warehouse where coverage was sort of the key issue and bandwidth consistency was an issue. And we're seeing that as well as that because of the superior performance of LTE as a radio technology or 5G in terms of its link budget. Um, the, again, the, the quality of service that we're able to deliver over CBRS spectrum versus unlicensed spectrum. These attributes make it ideal for uh, any application that requires really robust, really um, uh, consistent coverage. So, Kurt, uh, very nice. So, you describe the attributes of uh, communication for which this is a compelling uh, technology or compelling solution. Can you also talk in terms of enterprise vertical? Because sometimes people talk in terms of you know, in enterprise space, there are so many verticals and some verticals are more suited or they have a more compelling need. So which verticals you see where people are adopting 5G over CBRS, private 5G over CBRS? Sure, and I think it's actually Guru going to be an evolution. So the early adopters are those who um, are more flexible in terms of their end user device needs. So what I mean by that is that if they have the ability to um, uh, connect or deploy or retrofit a wireless router, say on a forklift or on an AGV, or um, uh, they're doing things like uh, that require um, a ruggedized tablet that has, you know, CBRS actually capability, CBRS capability already in it. They're sort of the early adopters because the sort of the device form factors are readily available for them. I think the the um, market verticals that will um, adopt later uh, are those that require a much higher degree of integration of the uh, connectivity solution with the devices themselves. So for example, healthcare, I think is a great example of that. Healthcare is probably one of the most uh, ideal applications for a private 5G network. And I'll come back to that in a moment as to why, but um, I think there are going to be a slower uh, adopter of it because if you look at a, um, you know, uh, a, a, any device that's being used to, you know, manage, um, uh, you know, maybe an, an IV to, you know, providing monitoring on the, on the patient, they're going to want that 5G capability embedded into whatever sensor or capability that the hospital is using. They don't want to have to worry about a lot of, you know, individual networking requirements because that would just seem too complex and maybe not reliable enough. So high degree of integration. Um, the reason why I think, for example, hospitals are an ideal, you know, uh, a use case longer term is because they really benefit from the private wireless environment. You know, today when you go into a hospital, if they're running, um, you know, a, a heart rate monitor or, um, you know, any sort of, you know, a diagnostic device over Wi-Fi, um, and no matter how well they've engineered that Wi-Fi network inside the hospital, if someone comes in with a smartphone and turns on a Wi-Fi hotspot, it's going to radically change the performance of the network. Maybe inter even interfere with some of the, you know, the um, medical devices that are in use. So they really would benefit from having a, a private, secure, reliable, uh, bandwidth controlled, main, you know, and bandwidth maintained network for those medical devices. And again, leaving things, you know, uh, a Wi-Fi network available as a public amenity or for doctors and nurses to use for you no know, more routine communication needs. 
So I think the evolution of use cases will have much more to do with how the end user device market evolves versus mm -hmm. a particular market vertical. I think almost every, every vertical is really ripe for a private network because there are security needs, voice communication needs, data communication needs that really are not entirely met through Wi-Fi today. And um, they don't necessarily want, uh, you know, an MNO or a service provider to come in and do that for them. They're very, they're very concerned about maintaining the privacy and security of their network and keeping. So it let me uh, ask you the question, right? So, uh, as you know, recently we had the CBRS auction, right? And when you look at the auction results, it appears by you know the cable operators and the uh, even Verizon and so on acquired more. Uh, I'm forgetting that term. Uh, the privileged access yeah. to priority the access licenses. That's priority right. Priority access did it, licenses. Did it acquire more. So tell me, based on how the auction results played out and looking into the future, do you think the private 4G, 5G over CBRS is that? something MNOs would offer or independent companies like Federated Wireless would offer? What is, how do you think it is going to shake out? Uh, yeah, so a couple of things. One, um, there certainly will be sort of deli different delivery mechanisms, if you will. And that could be uh, MNOs, MSOs, you know, cable operators, um, managing that network on behalf of the enterprise, right? So it's still a private network, but maybe they are um, providing that through you know, the uh, deployment expertise they have, or they're integrating it into other capabilities. Like, you know, for example, cable operators, they could integrate a, um, a private wireless, CBRS 5G private wireless capability together with the broadband that they're bringing to the premise. Um, there will be uh, managed service providers, systems integrators. There will also be connectivity solutions that are available directly through cloud marketplaces like AWS. Microsoft Azure, that's actually something that we're working on with, with both those companies. Um, so I think there's going to be a variety of, of ways in which the private wireless networks um, come to the market, you know, and, and the way enterprises are satisfied. Um, you mentioned the priority access license auction that did, as you said, just concluded. There were a lot of licenses that were acquired by uh, MNOs, by cable operators. Um, but in fact, a lot of utilities picked up licenses, much more so than in any other license auction, spectrum auction in the past, you know, for, um, you know, wireless mobility spectrum. Um, even, you know, some very interesting market entrants like real estate companies that are real estate developers that are looking to, you know, deploy um, 5G or priority access licenses. But by no means is an enterprise in any way shut out from, uh, having their own private wireless network if they didn't acquire a PAL license. Uh, the reason for that is there's this other tier of access called general authorized access, which doesn't require a license, just managed by our system. Again, the quality of spectrum is, and quality of access is managed through our SaaS. And the reason why GAA is very attractive for enterprises is because the enterprise can control who deploys on the campus, inside their buildings, and as a result, there will be a large portion of the overall band that's always going to be available for enterprises on that GAA tier. At least 80 megahertz is always available. That's reserved for GAA access. But even unused priority access license spectrum becomes GAA spectrum. It's a user share licensing model for the PALs. So that unused PAL also becomes available. So there may be, you know, many circumstances, even though there are PAL licenses that are, uh, that have been auctioned, they might not be deployed on a college campus, on a large utility uh, campus or manufacturing campus. And as a result, that spectrum will be available in addition to the 80 megahertz of GAA, leaving the enterprise with a tremendous amount of spectrum for them to operate with. Keep in mind, 150 megahertz of CBRS, sorry, 150 megahertz of CBRS is as much spectrum as Verizon basically has in their network today, or AT&T. When you take away their millimeter wave, that's what they're serving 100 million subscribers with. So imagine having that same quantity of spectrum to use for 5G just on your enterprise, you know, in your enterprise domain. It's really a, a tremendous capability. 
So uh, the other related question is that on one hand, you know, with this whole cloud transition, transformation that has been going on in enterprises for the last 10 years or so, enterprises are getting out of the business of having to manage, operate uh, the infrastructure, even the computing infrastructure that used to be considered something like very critical for their uh, business and all of that, they are kind of outsourcing that to the public cloud. So do you think enterprises would want to come back and want to operate a 5G network? Uh, do they want to hire the talent? Do they want to take the ownership of that? Or uh, they will look to MNO and say, hey guys, you are already providing cellular service to me. Why don't you provide me a private 5G service as well? Yep, That's, that, that may certainly be uh, an outcome. I, I think what um, Guru, what you're pointing out is exactly so true that enterprises don't want to have to get smart on 5G and they don't really want to learn 5G. They want it to be simple, easy, maybe even managed on their behalf. Um, the way that we're trying to help tackle this problem, we've um, brought forward a, a, a concept and capability called connectivity as a service. And the notion is that the only way an enterprise is really going to consume or deploy take advantage of a private 5G network is that it needs to be as simple as any other sort of cloud service that they're using. So connectivity needs to look just like how they're having uh, an edge compute platform deployed and managed by, you know, hyperscaler or other public cloud provider on their premise. So infrastructure can certainly be on-prem. It needs to be managed in a very highly automated way it needs to be maybe managed remotely by other service providers so that it can you know, provide the scale and efficiency that the enterprise is looking for. But like you said, the key thing here is simplicity. And I think that that's the evolution that is still happening. It's something that we're trying to help accelerate through that connectivity as a service offering. There are a bunch of other companies that are speaking on the uh, webinar panel that are talking about how they're bringing about the simplicity as well. Um, so I think there's uh, still a lot of work that needs to happen, but a lot of exciting, you know, developments that are already underway that I think will make this um, sort of transformation for the enterprise, you know, very real in the, in, the, in the near future. Very good. I guess before we run out of time, I have to ask you one more question, which is very relevant to ONF. What do you see the role of open source as we develop these new uh, solution for private 5G over CDRS with edge cloud, because as you know, ONF is trying to say, hey, it should be all based on open source and a common undifferentiated platform, and then you can add value on top of that. So tell me what are your thoughts on that? Well, I I, um, I totally agree. We totally agree at Federated. We are um, uh, completely aligned with that vision of open source, because ultimately we believe that open source solutions for the, you know, the radio software stack or that allow you to run on, um, you know, simple, um, uh, you know, mass manufactured, um, you know, radio platforms uh, to open source solutions for the core control and network management capabilities. Um, we believe all of this is really, um, all of, you know, open source is really going to be critical for um, adoption by the enterprise because uh, um, there's just no way that they can afford um, the price points that would come along with sort of um, very tightly controlled, uh, you know, vendor specific solutions. Even though 5G is a standard, much like what we saw with 4G and every G before that, it is still, um, uh, you know, there are still ways for uh, OEMs to put their, you know, their unique flavor um, their unique proprietary flavor on top of the specifications um, and, you know, create a more closed ecosystem for their solution. So um, open source is critical to reduce cost, improve flexibility, and ultimately drive the most important thing for the enterprise, that's innovation. Um, we think without open source, it's going to be very difficult for third parties as well as the enterprises to really innovate with applications on top of the connectivity solution. So, so we think it's, the, these things go hand in hand. Um, 
we are in effect open sourcing, you know, spectrum, you know, through, you know, through our, our cloud platform, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it is, it is disaggregating it, but it is making it open source in the context that it's, um, you know, we're making it available to anyone and everyone to innovate on top of. So I think it, you know, it, it's sort of very consistent with that principle. Very good. So tell me, is there any question that I should have asked and did uh, uh, ask uh, something you want to communicate to the audience uh, before we wrap it up? I, I think we covered all of it, Guru. You know, the, uh, again, the key takeaway is that I was pointing to in terms of this, um, you know, uh, revolution that we're all in the middle of right now is, the, you know, that connectivity over, over CBRS, the ability to bring 5G in a private wireless network context, the simplicity that's coming for the enterprises. All of these, I think, are incredibly positive developments that are um, going to make, I think, this you know, next wave of uh, wireless connectivity really exciting to watch and follow. I can't wait to see the sort of innovation um, that's coming. It's, I think it's going to be um, so much more than what we've seen in the past generations of, of wireless. Um, so, you know, just really, we at Federated are really excited to be part of it. I'm personally excited to be part of it. And um, thank you to ONF for uh, the opportunity to talk about what we're doing. Terrific. So thank you so much. And again, really appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts. And, uh, you know, here we go. So, Michelle.